This is the NFL recap for week 13. And uh, we want to thank first our sponsors for Tunica, Mississippi, and uh, tunicatravels.com. Thank those guys. we got six great sports books. No S on the end of that, by the way. <laughs> tunicatravel.com. Sorry about that. Don't, don't send them to the wrong place. No. My, my I, I wonder if there is a tunicatravel.com well, or t- travels.com. I don't know. We're, we're getting we're getting in the weeds here. We, we appreciate <laughs> their support, and we think that you should support them if you like the show because uh, they support us. Yeah, they do. Let's let's get into this thing. I think it's only appropriate or fitting for us to start with Thursday night. I there there has been few people around the country that has talked more crap about the Cowboys than me. I I, I got some crow to eat. It is it is cooked. It has been prepared, and it is it is there. Yeah, I cannot. But listen, this is the number that drives me insane. Total offense for the Saints. See, this is what happens. I invoked. The 2007 Patriots, when referring to the Saints, yeah, and they come out and they score, what well, not score? They they get 176 total yards. How does it, this happen? It was here? as bad as as I've ever. I mean, I just how, how does that happen? Uh, right, so I'm not going to blame it on the referees. It was a poorly officiated game, but. Anybody that tries to blame it on that, like, nah, just didn't watch the you game. Can't blame it, on that. it wasn't that. It, it bad, was. But you can't blame it on that. Uh, I wonder if it was a short week and them going on the road. It wasn't a short week. It was the same week for both of them. I know. I'm just trying so, to. So I'm here's what I really want. I'm grasping the straws here. This is what I needed because we haven't had one in a long, long time. I needed a good old fashioned conspiracy theory. Uh, a few different website groups tweeted out pictures and texted out a picture of a uh, Cowboys. Uh, Staff member in Cowboys like polo and stuff with his cell phone on the Saints sidelines directly behind Sean Payton. And I thought, man, I really need somebody to dig deep into the weeds and pull some some crazy story out of their butt for this. Hey, not not because it justifies what happened. We haven't had a good witch hunt in a while in the NFL. That's true. It's been a it's been a minute, and and I and I think I'm ready for it, and I'm ready for it to n- not be my Patriots, and so I just thought, <laughs> I mean, literally, this like is what it, it was. It was total, just it was something completely fabricated that there was z- zero evidence of it, and and it was a thing, and it cost Belichick a million bucks, Kraft two million dollars, them a first round pick, and Tom Brady four game suspension. Yeah, like like, and it was total fabrication, and I just thought, man. I need this to get legs. I need I need some sports writer to be broke and bored and run with this. Just make a story up. They've done it before. Yeah. That didn't happen. No. So, if I'm, – I'm trying to – I don't know what I think about the Saints after this. Is this just one of those games where if you're Sean Payton, you're glad this happened? And so now you, you get the light of fire under their butt because they were pretty much moonwalking through teams. Well, it, so the line this week on the Bucks game... It's a, it's a big number. It's But really, it's not that big. Well, considering the fact that it's on the road and it's a team that kind of beat the hell out of you. Yeah, but the Bucks are bad. Like, they were I really good it. the first two weeks. Yeah, two, three. And even then they even week off. three when they lost, they still scored like 40 points. They just yeah, lost. Yeah, so, like, I, it's it's strange, right? I, like, it's it's only eight and a half this week. I am trying to see it from the light of... It's a, it has something happened with New exactly Orleans that we don't know no. see, where I, it is. I think this team is going to get back to just kicking ass. I think this is exactly That's what, what they I needed. Think. The Cowboys played the game of the century for them. They they played their Super Bowl, and they won it. Congratulations. you got to give them all the credit in the world. <laughs> Here's what I love. Being the Cowboy hater antagonist that I am, Dak Prescott's about to get a nine-figure deal, and they're going to sign Jason Garrett to another five, six years. And that's all I need in my life is to make yeah. sure that this team doesn't change. Just, Jerry, you keep being you because that's what makes me me. Who do the Cowboys have this week? Eagles. The right? Eagles. Yeah, that's uh, – Eagles at home. And and if the Eagles win, then the Eagles uh, are tied with the Cowboys for the division lead. We don't have to worry about the Redskins anymore. No, the, the dead skins? That, oh, that thing is, is over with. Those poor bastards. Um, you said before the season started, they're the most injury-prone team in the league. And my response was, you can't predict injury. Man, maybe you can. Uh, yeah. I, I, like, I don't know if you believe in any of, like, the – the Indian voodoo, you know, whatever. I mean, is that like really like offensive that I just like compared to Indians and like witchcraft? I don't, I don't know. I don't mean no, no, no. It's but it's like not, like like some medicine man put some jinx on them. Maybe you need to change the name. I mean, it's it's possible. I mean, I'd be doing anything. I literally, I'd change the team colors. I'd move the team to like the other Washington. Like, let's yeah. move it to Washington State. Let's go. <laughs> like anything we have to do 
Something's got to give. Spokane. Yeah. yeah. The the Spokane yeah. Redskins. That's, that's it. Like, move down the road from a zoo. Hire Mike Leach. I mean, come on. I do. I would be doing anything I could possibly do. Oh, it's been, what, three straight years that injuries have just completely derailed this? this How long thing? has it been in the NFL since we've seen a quarterback break a leg, just snap a leg? It, it's it's been a, a long time. We, we blow ACLs and we sprain ankles. We don't we don't snap legs. We, yeah, we don't snap legs in, in two? two? It, in like it, in three weeks? Yeah, it doesn't happen, man. It, it's just one of those things where I was like, he broke his leg? Because you don't break it. You sure he didn't sprain his leg? You sure he didn't tear an ACL? Because that happened all the time. That makes sense. It didn't. Nope. Nope. Anyway, we, somehow oh, we got boy. onto the Washington game. Um, I wasn't meaning to transition there. I picked the Saints as a Super Bowl winner. Let's transition to my other Super Bowl contestant. I don't know that they're going to make it, but they took a big step forward Sunday night showing people they might make it. That's my Chargers. Yeah. Gary, you're a Steelers guy. The, I told the, you last week boys. that you were uh, 100% wrong on that pick. And when they when the Steelers were up 23-7 to in this game, I was like... Gary was already counting money. I was like, that's right. Let's go. I'm in. Let's do this. And Who would have thought Anthony Lincoln can coach? Now, I'll tell you this. One of the touchdowns absolutely should not have been a touchdown. It was a false start. But here's How the, it do you miss a false start? That's the second which time is a, done it. I know. That's what I'm saying. It is insane to me no. that you can continue to miss just... You, like, like you dead think, ball foul. You think they weren't going to score on that play? Maybe not on that play, but the next play. I'm telling you, this the it, defense, it, look, for the, the defense for the the the, the Steelers for as good as they looked in the first half, they looked equally as bad. They're fraudulent, man. I the mean, they half. really are. Like the word of the week Ooh. has been fraud. People who who put up this front that there's something, and and man, when somebody shows up and says, "All right, I'll test you," they just fold like a cheap suit. Yeah, it it was. I, I got no excuses for them. So so. I was wrong on a couple of things that I'll admit to now in the draft. I do not believe in the top 10 picks and taking cornerbacks, DBs, because I think it's incredibly impossible to judge because the college game and the pro game is, has always kind of been so different. Yeah. The talent level between receivers, and not that the games are different, the talent level between receivers at 90% of the colleges that you play against are not close to the receivers that you play against in the pros. So great DBs are kind of hard to find. I think they're hard to judge. I think it's real easy to look like a stud defensive back in college, and then you get in the pros and you just get worked. Okay. Okay. Derwin James, completely wrong on. Ward for my Browns, I didn't like when it happened. I was completely wrong. Those two guys should have gone in the top five. So many people passed on them. Those two dudes are studs. Derwin James is an absolute man. Yeah. He really is. He's a rookie, and I, he's just going to get better, man. These guys are going to wreck this league. Yeah. They really, I mean, Derwin James was... How did he fall? Now, how did he fall? I, I don't know. I, I don't understand how he dropped to, what was it, 17? Yeah, where the, uh, yeah it was uh, the Chargers, because I think the Chargers traded back. Or maybe I'm wrong on that. I'm, I'm not remembering the draft very well. But, no, yeah, I mean, it was pretty yeah, far Yeah, because Mika Fitzpatrick got drafted before him. Before, oh, before him. Oh, yeah. Which uh, and I think Mika might have gone seventeen. I think Derwin might have gone eighteen. And I think some of it was like character issues and something oh, else. Man, but I, I hey, you out. ain't you ain't heard a word out of him. And he is it, like we knew what he was at Florida State. He was a stud. You see what Florida State has been without him. But oh. and it's not just without him. It's just but you know losing, losing but, a guy like him that's tough. Man, that's that's culture. We talk about that when we talk about Florida State. It's how Willie Taggart can't come in and make him a tough team overnight. They lost a lot of toughness just losing that cat right there. Yeah, that guy can play ball. Bolt up, baby. That team, they're not going to win that division because they got too far away and from the Chiefs. They're too far away from the Chiefs. Nah, I don't think so. But maybe not. They got to beat the Chiefs. They, they, they play them this week, right? They still got to. No, no, no. It's not this week. Um, if it's the, not this week, the Chargers are playing the, uh, the Ravens. That's right. That's right. The, I mean, not the, week. not the Chargers. Uh, the, the Chiefs are playing, playing the Ravens. You're correct on that. But uh, yeah, like they're only one game back. They're yeah. 9 and 3. The Chiefs are 10 and 2. Man, I guess they could beat them. I mean, the Chargers could absolutely win that division. E- either way, they're moonwalking to a wild card spot. And yeah. You. Damn sure don't want to be the four seed. Yeah, you oh, the three seed. Right. The three seed's gonna play. No, it'll be the, will it be the four seed or the three seed. I think it's the it'll four be seed. The four seed to play them. You don't want to be that. No. Well, well, the four seed will be whoever. Oh, don't say whoever because I think it might be the Texans, but Texans might not lose again. No, what divisions we got in the AFC? We got uh, no. It might be the Steelers. Oh, it might be the Steelers. You better be careful. It might be the Ravens. You want to get to the Ravens because they won three games in a row with Lamar Jackson, at quarterback, and I have no idea how they're winning games. Uh, well, I'll tell you this. Uh, it's offensive, be... offensive, offensive statistics. Pretty, this is old-school Ravens football. Wait, you it's know, he didn't, he didn't even finish this past no, week. No, I know. Uh, uh, and, um, and he's probably not going to play this RG3 week. RG3 came in and played. RG3 looked pretty decent, man. I mean, RG3 looked, maybe, he looks like a vet. Maybe RG3 
All he needed was a defense and a coach that would play instead of the spread the ball out college offense that everyone thought we need to put him in because that's where he put up big numbers. Maybe we put him in a ball control offense and we only let him have so many snaps and touches every week. And that yeah. way he just plays safe, but he's still good enough to be explosive sometimes. I think, yeah, I think it's perfect for him. Can this, can we all kind of, not we, but like most and, of the And media, you thought that I was crazy when I said it was a good thing to keep RG3 I thought it was crazy. to, to I, help out Lamar Jackson. I because thought it was laughable the that same you thought guy. he was going to play. I thought it was. I thought it was laughable. I, I was wrong. I mean, I, I, mean, I missed a bunch. Because, like, Lamar Jackson is, Look, I got some stuff right, but I missed a bunch. I, no. and, and I told you this before. Like, if you keep running Lamar Jackson after that first game where he ran 27, 27 times. You can't let a quarterback touch I, the ball I said much. they keep running him like that, he's going to end up yep. dead. Yeah. He, they, they're going to kill him. This is the NFL. This is not, this it, is not the ACC. It don't even matter. The bad defenses, defenses yeah, in college. The bad defenses yeah. in the NFL are still good players, no, and they, they are saying, going to kill that boy if they keep running him like they the, have been. It's like the Big 12. Right? Uh, nobody plays defense, okay? Yeah. Let's move on. We'll, we'll, now, this week he's not really playing. Hey, if he does get to play, he ain't really playing a good defense. This oh, week went, about, about the – let's get back to the Chargers, man. We're kind of a little all over the place, but anyway, that's fine. this is a little weird. About the Chargers, we can't we can't talk about the Chargers without talking about Justin Jackson. They play in this game, and they're going to have to play at least the next game without Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, who I think is a top three running back in the NFL. Definitely a top five. Nobody can argue that. Yeah. Justin Jackson, this – Seventh round draft pick from Northwestern. He looks like he has a, like these guys can't touch him in open field. He looks like I'm, I'm going to invoke a name, and, and I'm not saying he's this guy. He looks like Le'Veon Bell. Like yeah. a guy's looking at him, and he like jukes left, jukes right, and you fall on the ground, and he goes four yards up. The next guy's there. He does the same move. Well, if, and if, the, you and watch, that guy falls. if you watch Justin Jackson in college. At Northwestern. And we did because we like Northwestern. He we was, follow that program. He was fantastic. In the bowl game against Kentucky last year, fantastic. And like he was great for his whole year. Kentucky defense, run defense, really was until yeah. this year. Exactly. Um, Those guys could play. Yeah, and, and Justin Jackson, like, he did it his entire career at Northwestern, but you never really understand how good the numbers are because some of them it's just because they've got a great offensive line. Yeah, it's yeah. Some guys it's just because they're that good. Yeah, it's, well, it's it's really hard to judge, especially at these schools where you're in a Power 5 conference and you compete all the time, but you're not the Blue Bloods, you're not the Michigans or the Ohio States. It, it's kind of hard to, to judge like how good these guys really are Yeah, um, that, that play for that, that middle-tier school. Here's what, watching Justin Jackson this week, and then we'll transition to the Broncos-Bengals game, Watching Phil Lindsay do what he did, undrafted free agent. That guy's going to go to a Pro Bowl this year. Yeah, pretty pretty incredible. Would you ever pay for a running back in your life? Like I think Saquon Barkley is a an unbelievable talent. I'm going to say that. I yeah, love that my Patriots have Sony Michelle. I, I love that my Browns have Nick Chubb. Like I love that these guys are there and they're they're studs, dude. Premium defensive players. Derwin James changes your team. If the if the Giants take, and I should know this guy, but literally Nelson, the, the big Quentin guard. Nelson. Quentin Nelson. If they take the big nasty guard from Notre Dame and they end up signing Phillip Lindsay or taking uh, 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 Dustin Jackson, dude. I'm How much they, better is that team? They've won a lot more games because Eli's not on his back nearly as much. That guy is a nasty guard. Anybody running behind him is going to look better. Like Those guys don't grow on trees. They don't. You don't find them every year, but you always hear stories of running backs just coming out of nowhere. I would never pay for And Le'Veon Bell, sorry, man, you're amazing. I ain't paying that guy either. No. Justin no, Jackson it, it, looks he, just like you. It cost me a ham sandwich. It, it, the Le'Veon Bell thing still amazes me that he wants to get paid like a wide receiver because when you look at his receiving numbers. They're not great. No. They're better than every running back out there. They're not uh, great. But they're not better than... Uh, well, they're not better than Whites. Well, they're not better than Whites, but they're also not better than James Connors this year. Well, no, not this year. You're right. And that's the thing. Right, it, it, but I would... Uh, I, I am... I would be careful to compare him to Connor so much. I think that is a shot at him. I think that is absolutely a a situation where this front office has made it clear. When we have games in hand, we boost Connor's numbers the best we can. And Connor has done everything you're supposed to. He's looked amazing. This is yeah. not a knock on him. I think that's an organizational decision to make sure his numbers finish better than Le'Veon's ever had. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that. In so I, I don't think that he would normally do that, and I don't think you're going to do that to him because we've seen running backs just can't take that many touches, that many hits, and yeah. live long. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. So I, I brought up the, the Philip Lindsay, the Broncos. Man, this Bengals team started off the season 4-0. <laughs> They're not good. What happened? 
Marvin Lewis happened. The curse of Hugh Jackson. Man. I don't even think it's that. I think it's. Listen, I think this is just what Marvin Lewis. Teams I think do. this team was competitive, and then Hugh showed up, and they were like, the no, they, they were the already bad. They were already bad before Hugh got they there. They were getting blown out by the Saints before Hugh got they there. Were but getting, everybody well, was. They were getting beat by a lot of teams. They were getting beat by the Ravens. They were getting beat by. I know. I know this. Driscoll. Driscoll's not not gonna help you. Well, I tell you what doesn't help at all. AJ, AJ Green, Green being out, out for the season. Yeah, him being gone. Jeff nope. Driscoll ain't, ain't a like he's not a good backup quarterback. Do he's, these do these injuries help Marvin Lewis keep his job because well we're hurt and we can't really judge him does Marvin even want to coach anymore I mean like I, I think the I think, I think the reason that he check. no I think the reason he brought Hugh Jackson in oh, Lord, was nice. I'm going to hand over the reins to him because he was my guy for a long time and he got treated bad in Cleveland and we're going to show Cleveland that he can win Please. if he's got the right structure around him and blah 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 I would, blah, I would blah. start a GoFundMe page I passed the plate I put my own hard cash in to pay for his first year salary let this be a reminder to you all that this organization will not tolerate failure. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> please, please, please. And you know what sucks, though? Andy Dalton has been fun. Joe Joe Mixon. What, what kind Joe of Mixon's been from? great. Joe Mixon's been really good. A.J. Green is a dude that's just unbelievable for the NFL. I don't want to see those guys go through that. I don't want to see that. Yeah. I mean, you know who, who deserves you? Perfect. Okay, like, he's like the perfect coach for him. Well, and, and- I mean, people still really don't like mixing. Like it, it, well, no, uh, after all these NFL domestic abuse videos that come out and all this, and and they just let mixing get drafted. Every, like, t- just play. every time, it's, I'm sure as soon as all this stuff happened with Hunt, and it was like, well, you know what's different about this is we have video. Mixing is just head down, walking. Don't nobody say nothing. Nothing that happened yep. a long time ago. Don't 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 talk to me. No eye contact for two weeks. Um, we we can talk about the Broncos though. I didn't. They think, won three in a row. I didn't think Vance Joseph could coach. Vance Joseph's coaching. I mean, hey, that team has greatly improved. Case Keenum like led the league in interceptions for a while. Like he and looked now good. He did. He looked really accurate the other night. Um, let me ask you a question. Okay. So John Elway comes out and he says, like in some interview, that he wished that Gary Kubiak was still his coach. Right. Well, that yes. was a few several yes. several weeks ago, and then this Green Bay thing pops up, and Kubiak's name is now. Attached to it, and, and he has said, take a head coaching job. "Well, he he says that he wants to get back into coaching. He was yes. quoted as that. Yes. So, what the hell? I, I think Kubiak has made it clear he wants to be an offensive coordinator. When 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 he went down the first time, that was kind of the conversation. I can't handle the whole thing, but I can put together an offensive call plays, and that not wear me out. I mean, the dude, I mean, legit, he still this works is, for the Broncos. So, so like, he does not. He, this is not an Urban Meyer situation. Okay, this guy legitimately has medical problems. No, he's, I'm, I'm he's with not you. a known historical liar. And and so, I, I, and right now, yeah, he's he's like an and maybe an, an analyst for him or something. But I mean, yeah, if he yeah, he's he, like he works in the front office or but something. But here's the deal: if he wants to get back into coaching, and he takes the green, here's the you can't fault somebody for wanting to take that Green Bay job. No, how many times? Job. How many times in life do you get to coach and just an elite level quarterback? Well, and and get to coach a premier franchise in the NFL. Well, I don't even know that it's a franchise. I think if That's, he was in Tampa Bay, no, he would want to take that job. Yeah, but, okay, no so, so, so yeah, Tampa possibly. Bay. But like Green Bay is still a legitimately top five job in the NFL. Probably, probably. So, but, I mean, not, you got I'm the Steelers, you got uh, the Cowboys. Oh, you got, this is old on a minute, all right? You just throwing out these names because of I don't, I don't no, know. No, I'm just talking about historically, okay. like big time teams. Like these are teams that have the biggest fan bases in the country. The most tradition, the most money, all that kind of mess, right? Um, I mean, at this point, we got to throw the Patriots in there, right? I, I think I think it has to do with who the quarterback is. Well, I think that's the majority of it right now. But you know, like yeah, like I don't it. want to crap on somebody who doesn't need crapped on. But like nobody's nobody's like beating somebody up to be Dak Prescott's coach. But nope, like, but, but there'd like, be a lot of people if it wasn't for Jerry. There'd be a lot of people that would want to but, be. But Jerry's not going anywhere. Like, I, the Redskins are a historic he, team. No, nobody want to coach them. Jake Rudin's got a job strictly because nobody it's, else wants it's to. It's a thing. different. They, like the Redskins, yeah, historical, whatever. They're the Cowboys. Um, they're no less historical than the Cowboys. They ain't even close to the Cowboys. Around the Memphis area, they don't have close to that fan base. Nationwide, there are tons of Redskins no, it, fans. It, I understand that there are tons of them, but, but they don't bring from. in the numbers. Not now. No, but they haven't for years. The Cowboys, it don't matter if they suck or not. They're still bringing numbers. Same thing with the Giants. The Giants, historic, like great fan base team. Like, yeah, they kind of suck right now, but they still draw numbers. Okay, so it's it it just is what it is. There's like four, there's a handful of those, like five of them. I think I think Aaron Rodgers is the biggest part, and that's and that is 100 percent accurate right now. I think Aaron Rodgers is the biggest reason so, why. You, if you, especially if you're an offensive minded guy like Kubiak is, where you'd say uh, that job's open, I think I'm gonna get back in coaching. Yeah, 
I think there's a uh, there's a lot of people. Bruce Arians. I mean, he like he probably wants to get back into it. Bruce Arians has made it clear he will interview for one job and one job only if they'll have him. What Cleveland? He has made. He has, He's actually came out and said that. He said one job and one job only. He said the only coach and job that I will come out of retirement for is Cleveland if they'll have me. That is insane. He openly said that publicly. Yep. I'm very excited about that. Why? John Dorsey, hear that man. Because I think this team is really close to being exceptionally. I think my Browns. I think my Browns are a great coach away from being a great team. Are we, are we moving to the Browns now? We, we can go to the Browns. Let me tell you this. That loss, that butt kick in Houston, the best thing I saw Sunday. Well, the second best thing. Second best thing I saw Sunday. You know why? Why? We avoid a Mike Munchak situation. And that's all I want oh, yeah, in my yeah, life. Like it, if, you don't if, have to worry about Greg if, Williams. If Greg Williams wins like six games in a row, we change and nothing. We're handing him the keys. Freddie Kitchen stays the OC, and nothing changes. And we say, look how good they were. And now for the next four years, we're stuck, and we've wasted Baker's prime. I wanted to. All I wanted was one week for us to look back. I didn't want to do it a week where I bet on them. But one week for us to just get the hell beat out of us. Yeah. So John Dorsey says, ah, see, sometimes he's good and sometimes he's this. And that looks a lot like the Hugh team that we saw. Okay, yep. we're good. I, I now, I'm good now. Like, now I know what's up. Now I know. That's all I wanted. Houston, that is, that's nine straight. Yeah, nine and three right I don't, I don't right know now. what to do with this. They might, I mean, could they be the two seed? The Patriots are not above losing another game to a team that's not going to make the playoffs. I mean, that's just part of this. It's that's, entirely possible. This is what I expect from the Patriots right now. Yeah. You know what's going to be nuts? Like, back to the Chargers. Like what, they, what if they went out? What, what if the Chargers end up with, like, the one or two seed and they have to host a playoff game? Like, just think about that. Well, yeah. There's going to be more fans for the opposing oh, yeah. team, no, doubt. no matter who it is, than, than fans in their own damn stadium. I, I think the Chargers have gotten very <laughs> – but here's the thing, though. I think that's why they go into places like Heinz Field. Yeah. And they get down, and it'll be good. Like, they're used to playing on the road. They don't care. It, yeah, they don't home, care. Home field advantage means nothing to them, which also means when they go play your place – that don't mean anything either. Yeah. Now, if they right. had a kicker, they'd be a lot better off than they are. Who uh, who else you got? Um, so we we running. No, we're rolling. Yeah. I, I want to talk about I want to talk about Kareem Hunt. I want to talk about the Chiefs a little bit. How do you think losing him for the season, them releasing him, affects that team? Because I mean that dude was talented. Oh, he was definitely talented. They still scored forty, but it was against the Raiders, and I really don't know how to judge anybody who plays the Raiders. They only yeah, beat no. him by seven. Raiders scored 33 against this defense. I know that defense is bad, but damn, 33. It's, hey, I know because I had the Chiefs minus 15, man. I, like, they, they led for – they led by, like, double digits the majority of the ball game. But giving up 33 is I think – all right, so bad. for the fact that they let him back in the game, what's yeah. crazy is that's what Hunt could do. Hunt was the running back that could just hand the ball and say, well, you're going to close the game out for us. Yeah. If you got in that situation – I don't think Ware could do that. Maybe he can, and it's just his well, first week like back. Ware's been he he's been good in the past, um, but I yeah I don't know I don't like it's going to take a couple of weeks for us to figure out exactly what he is. Um, and then what do you think of the Hunt situation altogether? I mean, so when it happened to Ray Rice, Ray Rice was on the tail end of his career. And I said the minute it happened, he's never playing again. And the reason I knew that is because he was terrible last year. Nobody takes a chance on play. You don't get second chances if you suck. Yeah, you, don't, you was, don't get second chances if you're old. This was a rookie last year. He's 23. I, he will play again. He did the right thing by coming out and, like, apologizing and, and all See, this. I, but I think all that's – all right, so personally I think all that – like, it happened, it, like, it happened 10 months ago. You're sorry today because it finally got out. All right, so – Yes, I do agree with you on that, but it did make him somewhat of a sympathetic figure around the country. And not Man, to everybody, I just, but but it was sympathetic right. enough to give somebody a reason to take a chance on him. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, it, some somebody will give him an opportunity because somebody's going to need a running back. And I'm not talking about this year. It, it'll probably be next year. He's on a commissioner exempt list right now. He's not yeah. playing this year. Which anyway. let, Let's talk about that for two seconds. All right. I am done with the NFL and their investigations. Why do we have investigations? I don't like, think I don't think they're using that word properly. Uh, no, I, I know that. Like, 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 that's not how the word investigation is supposed to. Hang on, we didn't talk to Hunt, and we didn't talk to the alleged victim, and we couldn't get the tape. What, and when the Kansas City was you, trying to get the tape, we told him, "Hey, don't quit. stop." What did you do to investigate it? There was no investigation. Look, I'm not a. I'm, but not, I, a I'm not even talking about that person. I, anything that happens in probably a two hour span of Memphis, in in like a hotel or something that involved like a family member or a friend. If I had to get my hands on something, like that, look, I'm, I don't, I don't know the ins and outs. I'm not a million dollar company in it. So 
I think I could get it. I think I could get it. Yeah, I think you could do. Like, yeah, this the is, NFL could have got this tape if they wanted to. Like, TMZ yeah, I didn't pay for it. TMZ dropped 50K on, on the table and said, I want the tape. But, like, I don't think I had to do that. No. no it's, not that, it's not that complicated, man. No, it, here's, so they got a 10 dollars an hour security person that works for the Chiefs that I promise you, you go ask him and say, hey, what would you have to do to get a tape from another security person that makes like eight bucks an hour at this hotel? You have to call him. And he's going to tell you, oh, I can, I can get you that right. I'll go over there and get it right now. Do you yeah. need something? Do you need money? No, I'm good. I'll just go get it. Yeah, I'll just, just go get it. Just go talk to him. Yeah, but the, the NFL investigation thing, when when Roger Goodell put in this conduct policy crap, Ray Lewis was like he was involved in a murder case. That's and, right. I got and, whole, and this dude did not miss any games. This could, this could take a whole different path, but go ahead. And I'm Leave it to the courts. Leave it to... The people that that handle that mm-hmm. stuff. I'm okay with you you saying you can't play in our league. This is a private league. No, that's, it's a and private that's, club. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Two members, and, and you don't get to play Look, if we don't. Kareem Hunt. Yeah. It, when the video comes out, if Kansas City says, you know what, we're not comfortable with him being on our team anymore, you, he's gone. You can't read. Then that's fine. You have to know about it, and you have to make a decision but before if, the public sees it. But if you did not know about it, yeah. Like if it drops like this one did, then but okay, it should, it should never do that. It should it, never no, do that. No, it shouldn't. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you, if it does, you then you have the right to have this. it before TMZ has it, and then you make yes. your decision. And if everyone says, "Damn, why Kareem Hunt get released? But it, it why should, did nobody pick him up? What happened?" And then if some investigative journalist did some research and they found it, they'd be like, oh, "Okay, well then the NFL would look like, hey, hey, they, they, they did something." It's yeah. not the NFL's responsibility to dime him out. It is their responsibility to say, "Look, we can't have this." It's not if, it's when. It will come out. Here's my thing: if I was any ranking member of the NFL. Okay, in the in New York, if I had an office somewhere in New York, I, I don't care how low I am, I would try to get four or five NFL owners on my side, get them to bankroll private security. We walk into the NFL office Monday morning. We go up to Roger Goodell's desk. We physically remove him from his office. I am the captain now. This is a straight <laughs> coup situation. You remove him from the building. You get no buyout. You get no severance. You leave with your life and nothing else. That is it. You are done. How bad are you at this job? I am taking over. I am taking over right now, and I'm taking it by force. Old school. King takes the throne. That's it. Here's the problem. The owners like him. Not all of them. Not all. Uh, yeah, but 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 the majority do. I, I will assure you of this. Because if, if they didn't, no, then he would be gone. I, I I think I think nobody wants to upset the apple cart. But I think if you had somebody who's willing to, to call a couple of the owners and say, "Look, y'all are making a lot of money. Any nutsack could sit in that table and make a lot of money, and yeah. not make these mistakes. Let me have that chair. Back me up on having that chair." And I assure you, you will not lose one nickel. You will make more money when I'm done. But you will have something that that shield actually, the whole protective shield will actually matter. You'll yeah. have something that you can be proud of. To have this. And listen, am I going to get rid of all the riffraff? No, but I will assure you of this. I would get the information. I would have had it taped nine months ago. And I would have leaked it to the public, to the media. I would have brought it to the chiefs. And I said, you're an owner. This is your employee. He is not my employee. Handle this. However you choose to handle it, handle it. Now. When TMZ one day gets that video and drops it and you do nothing, I will make it abundantly known. We did our investigation. We found it as a leak. That owner chose to do nothing. Support the Chiefs as you will. Yeah. That's they are, on you. They are one of the 32 members in this house. I cannot tell him what to do, but that's on him. We did find it, and now, now the owner has to take that scrutiny. Yeah. Nope. So they're going to handle it however they handle it. And we just talked about it. And, of course, I'm going to justify it, which is so weird. If he played quarterback, would it be different? Because you can find running backs Falling anywhere, man. Yeah. Literally, just find a guy that runs with passion and fury and pissed off and won't fumble the ball. And you, all these guys have speed. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, now, you're right. I'm sure there's a million other things we could cover in the recap. I think that's a good spot to end. That's cool. That's good. I got a plan for a coup for Roger Goodell. If anybody wants to support my, <laughs> uh, my claim for kingship. That is, uh, what is that? That is our... Week 13. Week 13 recap. <laughs>